What does photography mean to you? A hustle, creative expression, your ticket to your favorite locations, or is it an excuse to go out? Do you call it your career, or is it just some stuff that you're actually good at? Okay, take, take a second to think about it. Well, for me, photography has mostly meant one thing, which is a creative expression. And of course, this has led to open doors of opportunities that changed my life forever. Like, you know, I've been to about 16 states or more around Nigeria, over 28 cities and counting. I've had my works published at national dailies, you know, I've photographed presidents, leaders of multinationals. I've traveled across the country in style, I stood out in youth leadership conferences at the United Nations, at the African Union. You know, I've earned my first million. And even I have served as the official photographer to the governor of the most industrial states. Did I say the most? Well, I kind of hype Ogun states. But yeah, it's one of the most industrial states of the Federation by the age of 22. It's kind of a big deal for me. Okay, guys, like relax. I'm not hyping myself, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying it's kind of cool, you know. And to think that photography did this for me just by expressing my creativity, um, it. It's just great. So I'd like to add that I could have been anything else, guys, like a painter, dancer, singer, or anything else in the arts. But photography became the first medium of expression that was within my reach. Okay, so welcome to the first episode of Sova Podcast on Photography. So first off, what is Sova? Right, SOVA simply means School of Visual Arts, and yes, it's an abbreviation, of course. We are starting with the Faculty of Photography under this school, as it is one of the most utilized mediums in visual art today. I bet you'd agree, right? So we all have a story to tell, regardless of our professions, whether you're a doctor or a lawyer, you work pro bono, you know, you're a volunteer somewhere. We all have a story to tell. And photography has become that very essential tool that puts a thousand words in the frame for our audience. So let me just say that photography, or sorry, Sova podcast actually on photography is not just for professional photographers, but everyone who is enthusiastic about the power of photography and storytelling through that visual. Um, Sova is also about empowering photographers, you know, from beginners to the established with knowledge on how to keep leveling up their game in this field of work. Because, guys, it's, it's a real hustle, right? And we all need to keep learning. So what is this episode about? Today's episode, which is the first ever episode on um, Sova podcast on photography, is my introduction to photography, quote-unquote, my introduction to photography. So it's really not about, like, the how-to theories of photographers for beginners, you know, but it's more about, like, personal experiences. And um, you learn a lot from the unlikely stories of some of your favorite photographers with this series. Yes, I won't be sharing alone. Today's podcast features a celebrated female photographer who is a published international documentary photographer, an award-winning visual storyteller, and special assistant on photography to the president. Also, the personal documentary photographer to the vice president of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo. And, of course, she's my dear friend and colleague in the big, big business of image making and storytelling. Ah. Tolani Ali, uh, I'm so excited. You've probably heard me say this somewhere else before. Photography did not start big for me or most established photographers that you know today, right? Um, we've always got to go like way back in time to find the leads and that is the essence of this introduction. So let me just add that for our non-Nigerian listeners, you, know, you don't have to feel left out. You could learn a lot from this conversation. So just like... Um, send me feedbacks, you know, I'll talk more about feedbacks later, but just pay attention. And I'm sure you have something to take from this. So here's a bit about my journey, because you probably would like to know a little bit about myself. And yeah, I, I have a, a cute story for you guys. Um, so for me, mine really goes back to my childhood years. There were kind of signs of artistic talents that I had. And 
Um, it often got me on the spotlight through primary and secondary education, right? And I also got the orientation, of course, that art was doomed to make one poor. So I'll do better as a medical doctor or a lawyer, something like that, right? Like this is a story most of us can relate to. However, I met with photography through my phone, really. I was like in 100 level in uni and... Um, and I was beginning to get known for making good photos with my phone's camera. I got advice by my well-meaning friends to intern for professional photography services during the long breaks. So I did just that. I figured, what's up? I have nothing to lose, right? You know, and I made attempts to intern at top, top photography studios. I remember a day... Guys, you need to hear this, but I remember a day I dressed up, I was so clean, looking so good, stepped up to Wimby's office in Lagos. So for those who don't know, Wimby's is the Women in Business Network, right? It's, it's kind of a big deal. And it was in my master plan after my careful, careful research. Now, T.Y. Bello, drum rolling, is part of the renowned Women in Business Network. And even if she'll say no to me, like, she, she, can't, she just can't say no to them. That was in my master plan. But guys, I remember also leaving that same office disappointed. Why? Because I heard it over the phone speaker myself. She already had a studio full of interns and one more would be too many. So yeah. That didn't work out, you know. You've probably had like a similar situation where you tried to intern for one of your favorites and got a no. Well, well, after the attempt to join the Who's of Photography didn't work out, you know. By the way, did I add that I was asked to pay to learn and at that time I couldn't afford it and my parents would not even support that either. Um, so after all that big trial didn't work out, I, I just braved up, you know. I manned up, womaned up, something like that. And I approached um, a small studio down my street, what you wouldn't call standard today. Um, but yeah, I had no money for training, but I was ready and I was willing to work and learn while being of service to my then boss. So I remember my then boss, his name is Mr. Adex of Adex Photo Studios in Majek, Aja, Lagos. So you may already know a good photograph to involve elements like, uh, wait, hold up. I don't know how you started your photography journey, but you probably by now already know that a good photograph involves elements like lines, colors, composition, candid imagery, and more. But here is one of the first instructions I got as I leaned into the world of professional photography. Yeah, so I remember my boss speaking to me back then. He was speaking like pigeon. Uh, so I'll just, I'll, I'll just keep it English for the non-pigeon listeners. So he was simply saying then, like, there are just three major elements in photography. And once you've got a hand of them, the rest of it is a piece of cake, right? Three elements, just three. Can you beat that? Like, just three, the whole brouhaha of photography, you know, is really just summed up to three main things. And that was what, I'm not, I'm not saying it, I'm quoting my boss then, Mr. Adex. And trust me guys, like, I still hold on to those three elements because, I mean, who doesn't? If you throw them out, then your lines and your colors and your composition uh, will probably mean nothing. So tell me a little bit of how you learned about photography or how you started your journey into photography, even if it's hilarious. Um, I'm not going to give you all the gist now because I'm your host on this over series and we've got time. Uh, I have to stop right now and we'll get into the rest of this conversation with our guest for today. You know, I already hinted you that we'll be having Tolani on today's episode, but there's a reason for this. Okay, she's been a source of inspiration behind Silver Series on Photography, and she's one of the most passionate learners on photography that I know. Also, guys, like she's really eager to share experiences and resource points for you to gain insight on developing your photography skills. If you're looking to do that, but hey, if you're here just for the gist, like, that's fine, okay? So, aside her studious approach to visual storytelling, Tolani has also gone through learning experiences from the Danish School of Media and Journalism on Documentary Photography Projects, 
um, Fearless Photographers Foundation course, and of course the International Photo Agency, VII Agency, Documentary Photography, Storytelling course. So um, it's, it's, it's really good to have her on board for SOVA. So one more thing, one more big thing. Now here's the big news, right? So since SOVA is the School of Visual Arts, right? And photography is our first established faculty. We can say that Tolani is the academic dean of SOVA on photography. So yay. Cheers to having her on board for this again. And um, please note, you'll be hearing a real conversation shared over a phone call. So you might want to pay a little more attention or you miss out on some words. Feel free to take notes. Our YouTube channel is open for questions and comments. And you'll be getting feedbacks directly on the same platform or via future podcasts. And now, without further ado, I'm so excited. Here is our unscripted convo after the shutter click. All right, so let's do this. First things first. How are you day? How are you side? <laughs> how does it how, how does it feel like to be a photographer at this time? Ah, uh, man, it it feels like yeah, uh, like uh, the culture of history, right? Because everything that is happening today in the world has never happened before mm-hmm. in our parents' lifetime. It didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Even in some of our grandparents' lifetime, it didn't happen. Yeah. I think the last time I was reading, this happened in, like, 1918. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you can really imagine almost like 102 years later. Yeah. That's like um, the influenza, right? Happening. Yeah, exactly. And mm-hmm. even Ebola wasn't like this, Mm-mm. you know. So, um, I mean, it, 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 it's a very contrast. It's a contrast to... I mean, how you live, like, you know, you have to wear a mask, mm-hmm. you, you know, you can't, you have to stay one meter apart from people, mm-hmm. you can't shake hands, you can't hug anybody, even your parents, you can't hug anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I think um, it, there's no better time in the world to be a photographer because you, you, you get to document that history, like, right? Your pictures will be referenced back for years to come about a very interesting time. So mm-hmm. I truly, truly, even when sometimes it speaks to you to take it for granted, I don't take it for granted. Where we're all in a meeting room and everybody's wearing masks. Mm. Like I, I took a photo the other day. Um, you know when you watch all these um, medical movies, like medical shows, like Grey's yeah. Anatomy and stuff. Yeah. You know how when they're about to put their mask on mm-hmm. in the surgery room, someone is helping them tie their mask down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I saw that same scene in a meeting the other day. I was taking a picture and I was like, oh my God. And this, this is, is a normal crazy. day. This is not, this is not this is a normal a medical day. This is not thing. the hospital. Yeah. This is not the surgery room. This mm-hmm. is a meeting, you know? Mm-hmm. So I found that to be very, very interesting. And I think you have to also pay extra attention because... Mm-hmm. The things you would easily take for granted are actually what is monumental. They're actually what what is mundane. Mm-hmm. Um, it's mundane. It's not something that is going to happen again. So, um, mm-hmm. just because you see somebody wearing a mask all the time, you're like oh, like even if you get used to it, yeah, you still have to be aware that yeah. instead of you seeing it and getting used to it, you mm-hmm. should also partake in the moment with your camera. Yeah. And I think that um, that's been the biggest, the biggest thing I've, I've taken from all this. Well, I, I don't think um, getting used to it, the, the phrase getting used to it applies to someone like Adi Mularin because um, he can't get used to a boss who, <laughs> who styles his own mask with Ashoke. Like, you can't get used to that. That's fresh. You know, I mean, that's, just, that's, just like, that's like that's like next level. As you we were saying, it, I was just thinking about it, like, you no, know, this is not it's not the same thing for all of us. There are some people that, you know, they are styling they are styling it at a different level. But it's quite interesting. Yeah, I, I, have you seen how when you, when you look at when you look at other pictures now, like from before now, and let's say you just post a picture of a an old meeting, like a meeting that happened like last month, um, early on, before all of this started, you're likely to get a reaction like, oh, why are they sitting so closely? Like even you, if you see someone post a picture online right now, 
and people are like together or holding hands or putting their hands on their face. It it has this funny feeling, you know, and that's because of yeah, it that's does. because of the it sensitization does. and all of that that's yeah, going it around. Does. Um, it does. And even even you as a photographer, you actually have to be careful. Like mm. I um uh, man, I remember like, you know, doing a course and in, in the course they were like Photographers need to stop wishing and just start documenting as is. Like, stop mm. wishing that this was a better situation or this was better light or just actually make, make, make diamonds out of what looks like trash, you mm. know, just take what you have and actually. So sometimes when you are, when you see people getting close and you are taking those photos, you're like, oh, you guys are supposed to be practicing this kind of stuff. Well, then you just have to continue to shoot because it's a contrast to what that's how life is changing for some people like, True. that's how life is actually changing for them like it's a contrast like mm-hmm. everything is a contrast like everything is changing everything is you know and the photographer is, who has saved mm-hmm. you know that moment in time before and exactly. it's through that lens you actually get to see the contrast like between our realities then and now Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And and that's why I said that, you know, I was talking to Brian the other day mm-hmm. about how we are itching to go and just document. We know how powerful documentary photography is mm-hmm. this um, this period. That um, and we are itching to just get out there on the field to go and actually tell those stories. Mm-hmm. But we can't because. We have to be safe and, you know, we have to limit also who we are, who, where we are going because of our position and our assignment. Mm-hmm. But it now occurred to me that even us, we are in, in the peak of history because as much as we also want to tell the stories of the street, people would also want to see how people in power and government were also reacting. Yeah. That people also want to see how, like, the world was that way. Exactly. Or how situation was, how rooms were, how people were actually, you know, and that. So we, even in our own little way, yeah. are going to contribute a lot too to the future of how, you know, how this situation was to people and how people reacted and how people took it. And mm-hmm. so, I mean, it's um it's, it's very interesting, like or or your boss wearing it a made in Nigeria mask, you know. Mm-hmm. And he's so proud of it and he's like, Hey, this is made in Nigeria and mm-hmm. he's rocking it. Mm-hmm. And it's a black mask and everybody's like, Oh, he looks like someone from the superhero <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, it's really so interesting. And mm-hmm. it, I won't like you to um it also challenges you like in terms of you, sh- you are shooting in the same meeting room now, but you actually have to look for different angles and different positions that justify your story. And then mm-hmm. if you are not careful, so it might not make the person, like the photographs are not even, might not make out the person mm-hmm. because you are used to seeing their full face. Mm-hmm. So now the only thing you can see is their eyes and their cap. Mm-hmm. Know that they are the one, you know, so it's finding, quite, it's finding quite. elements that still makes your principal stand and, out. Exactly, out, yeah. exactly, exactly, and I and I think that's what's beautiful about Demola and his boss. Mm. Um, you know, the, the ability for him to also recognize to take those images. I mean, it's one thing to it for it to be cool. Your boss can have all the drip in the world, but if you don't recognize it as drip, you can't communicate it to the world as drip. Okay, so what it would you is. say to like? commercial photographers at this time. What do you think? What do you think they should be doing with all this extra time? A lot of people are like away from events and you know you know you know, you know what it's like, like every Saturday the job is to go out right, there the wedding, for the wedding the one birthdays. Day. Yeah. Exactly. Dead so yeah. So all those photographers, what what do you think what do you think this time would do for them? Like for for documentary photographers, and folks like you and I, we get to still document, you know, the times. You're still an essential worker 
photographers, journalists are still essential workers now, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you still get to tell yeah. the story, you know, for posterity's sake, yeah. and even to report yeah. news now. Yeah, so right. but what about those guys? Like, should they just leave their cameras hanging, you I know? No, I, I think it's, it, I've actually seen a lot of commercial photographers like Gazmadu, mm-hmm. like Tuman, um, um, Kelechi Amadi will be. I've seen them actually. You see, and one of these things I always tell people is that build yourself in such a way that you can be adaptable. It's that fine. no matter the way the situation comes, mm-hmm. you you actually are ready. So, like that's what I was referencing before that you know sometimes you would wish. Sometimes you see a shot and you're like, ah, I wish the mask was in on, mm-hmm. ah, this should have been big. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, no, this is actually cool. And now, when, when now you, you feel like, oh man, I wish his mask was on because this would be such a cool shot with his mask. Mm-hmm. So the point is, you just take it as they come. I think the, the biggest success a photographer can have is when you're adaptable. So I think as Madu now take up training, mentorship, she's teaching what she knows, she's sharing with people, she's, she's speaking to people online, people mm-hmm. are doing classes, people are doing Instagram lives, a lot of people who normally they didn't even embrace technology in their work are now being forced to actually use technology good. and I always feel like there's always room for everybody in the cloud or the sky to shine yeah. and yeah. to succeed. Like, there's so much room for everybody to do different things because there's yeah. a hole that needs to be filled, right? And right now, what has been so inspiring to me is having access to knowledge. Like, you know, there's so much I'm there's learning. There's so much in information going so much everywhere. Information yeah. There, everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's, it's only if you don't want to to seek it. That's all you want. I mean, you but there's so it. much information. So much documentaries. I mean, and I think it's for any any photographer, I also think it's time for you to better your craft, better mm-hmm. better your your ability to do work that you've not done in a while, mm-hmm. better your website, teach yourself tricks, learn new tricks, practice. And it also allows you to even use what's around you. Like I've seen so many people do COVID stories that they're documenting their kids, they're documenting their husband. Thank I you. saw someone who did like a make believe wedding with her husband. Like no way. Who's that? I'm telling you. I'm going to be personal. Just to, just, to, just to practice things she learned from a workshop we were attending. She actually had a dress up. She, she positioned the lights. She did everything. And wow. I was just like, this is impressive. And wow. imagine how doing it for a wedding. And she had to get dressed. She had to get her wedding gown. She had to do her makeup. She had to do her own hair. Now imagine her having shoot a wedding after this season. I mean, the images are going to be phenomenal because True. she has been intentional in. And the, and this is something uh, she would not have done like on a normal day. Exactly. Right. Or even yeah. Or even go. She probably. Has, and another thing is, it's also shown you that knowledge can be done anywhere. So for instance, this class I did right would have cost me like three thousand dollars because. The wow. class alone will cost you three thousand dollars. Then you have to buy a flight ticket. Then you have to pay for accommodation and pay for all those things. So mm-hmm. it'll cost you like five thousand dollars to actually get that. Money. And wow. you have to go across the globe to get you that. You have to leave your money. work. Yeah, exactly. Well, now you know you got that knowledge in your space, mm-hmm. in your home. Mm-hmm. And the cool thing about it was everything I learned, I had an opportunity to go and try it immediately at work. Mm-hmm. So it, it's pretty cool how, and then even like sometimes your fears, like I remember like, you know, in being in the class and they were like, oh, you know, invisibility comes from you being there all the time. Mm-hmm. So that once you are there all the time, the person is just used to you being there. So they won't care that you're not there. They won't care that you're not, you know, and, and, really, and so I used to be afraid, you know, during meetings, I don't want to distract anyone. And then, I mean, I started moving and I started like learning how snakes move. I was actually watching National Geographic mm. on how snakes move that they don't want you to know and how lions go for their prey mm-hmm. and how strategic they move. Yeah. And I actually started applying how I move in it so that they don't see me. So, I mean, <laughs> it's crazy the That's things crazy, they're taking. Man. 
I know, very crazy, but that's the point. Like, yeah. You, it's, I always say that life is either good or bad, depending on how you choose to see it. Yeah. So this COVID thing, if you see it as a, a, a terrible period, a time, that's what is always going to be. Yeah. But if There's, you see it as... As an well, opportunity to, like, create something and make something out of the situation, you still come out with amazing work. I think I released... Exactly. There's, there's, exactly. there's this guy I follow, I think he's from Kenya, uh, Mutua Mateka. But online you find him as Truth Slinger. Does that ring a bell? Mm. Truth Slinger. Mm. Like, he travels around Africa making photographs of, like, uh, our urban spaces, you know, mm. you know that when you when you think of New York, there's this picture that comes to mind. You know, the lights taken from probably like a rooftop I or with swear. a drone shot. Yeah. Lights, yeah. you know, some beautiful shades and all of that. So Tristlinger mm. does that, but then for African, mostly, mostly African urban spaces. And it captures mm. it in such like a beautiful way that you'd be like, oh, wait, is that Lagos? Are you sure that's Lagos? You know, he will edit it and all of that. So he has, like, good followership mm-hmm. online or good following online. Mm-hmm. But guess what? Of course, Chris Linger, like everybody, he can't travel at this time. <laughs> so I went to his page, and he's taking, like, he's making very beautiful photographs, self-portraits with himself. So he's made himself, like, into two. I need to send you the picture so you get what I mean. He's made himself like into two. He's assisting himself in the... I, I can't explain it. You just have to see the pictures. But it just made me think, like, this guy would not have stopped to, you know, maybe do something extraordinary and give his followers a different kind of content. And it's just interesting to see him in a different way, to see him express himself in a different way as opposed to what he would do like on a normal day. We know he'd probably send us pictures from like one African country or some foreign place that he's been to and is documented. Oh well, yeah. interesting convo. Thanks for pouring your heart out. We're already like covering the time we're supposed to use, but it's good, it's good that we even went <laughs> off route so it doesn't sound very scripted. Yeah, but <laughs> but um, the 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 first episode is supposed to really be about, and this first episode is supposed to be about, you know, our introduction to the world of photography. So I think what we'll do is we'll open the floor for people to ask questions. So yeah. maybe we we'll take like questions that that got repeated too often, and then we can continue yeah. in like the following podcast. What do you think? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah? So then people will ask yeah. directly, instead of me just giving you the question, so people will ask, oh, um, at what age did you start shooting or something like that? And then it yeah, will right. guide your answers. Is that cool? Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Do you have any, um, ah, how do I put it? Oh, I don't know how to sound like all these serious people. But just, let me just say the way I feel it. Do you have any, um, piece of advice for anyone like at this time, you know, any photographer, you said a lot though, you know, anyone who looks up to your work or anyone who is thinking, oh, this time has made me feel so lost or I don't even have all the data to watch all the videos online, you know, what do you, what, what would you say to I, them to keep? I, I, I always, I always know? say that one of the things that my mentor always said was mm. that, you know, he said, a lot of people, I ask a lot of people, I mm-hmm. ask. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people might not share, but if, if you ask, they will share. For the so- sake of those me. listening, for the sake of those listening, this is Kobe Bryant, yes. right? <laughs> yes, 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 yeah, yes, yes. Okay. And so people, people, people might not share, but you ask. Mm-hmm. And if they know that you are caught from the same cloth, they would open up to you. So mm-hmm. the point is, sometimes I think some people would say, oh, I need a camera, I need it. Nah, build that brain first. Build that knowledge side first. Build mm-hmm. that first. Mm-hmm. Sometimes your investment into photography might just be a book. Mm-hmm. And then because somebody sees how passionate you are, they buy you a camera. Mm-hmm. And then you would even realize that when you have the camera, you are not even still creating the type of images you want to do because the knowledge is shit. Mm-hmm. So, 
for me is that there's so much free knowledge out there. Like even me sometimes I I I'll use Google and say composition rules. And I'll find myself studying back the basis of the basics of composition, of the basics of light, of mm-hmm. the basics of exposure and and highlight. And I, I find myself always going back to the basics. Yeah. So, so sometimes I would say use this opportunity to peace, man. Use it to, to better yourself in every aspect. Mm-hmm. And 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 take take as much from people as you can in the sense that. I know that there's so many people I've reached out to during this period, like, hey, I'm, I'm like, how can I do better work? I'm trying to do better work. I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to work on my composition. I'm trying to work on my storytelling. Like, how can yeah. I do this? How can I, yeah. you know, and for instance, like, I was, I was, I was taking some photos a couple of weeks ago and I sent it to, um, like, one of my photography colleagues and I was like, you know, man, hey, help me critique this. Mm-hmm. And he was like, that oh wow these are incredible shots he's like but I think what you're doing is you're moving around too much why don't mm-hmm. you just work on that one spot and layer mm-hmm. everything around that one spot mm-hmm. so you just need to stand in the center and then I'm like oh wow and then instantly think of I that. went to try it yeah. yeah I went to try it and I sent it back I was like can't you see the photo is iconic it tells the story and then when I when someone that now knows about what I was documenting like about the spot now said, oh wow, this is like the best picture that depicts how to play this game. And I was like, oh my god! Like so, the photo actually taught people how to play the game. Like so, if someone wanted to use that photo to reference how to play the game, they can use it because standing in that spot allowed me to show people how to actually play the game. What game am I talking about? Is it uh, is it with the VP? Yeah, like with like squash. Squash, right? right? So, right? Oh, I saw so, the picture. Yeah, I saw so, the picture. Yeah. So in yeah. the sense that, oh, you know, you can actually teach, teach squash players how to play the game from this picture. So oh wow! And you see where this person is standing. Mm-hmm. This is how to play. This is where to wait for. This. And I was like, wow, this is so cool. Like, I mm-hmm. mean, I didn't even know. Me, I'm just making sure I'm documenting <laughs> and I'm telling the right story. But yeah. you don't know how people are actually seeing what you're doing. Because you've gone the extra mile to improve on it, you've now helped somebody, like, learn a craft or learn a sport. Mm. Because you went the extra mile to improve. So... Mm. I, I, I think that that would be my advice. But this this use this free time. I don't know when next in the world we're ever gonna get this free time where everything is at the hall. Yeah. The and you, you have like a legitimate matter. excuse to Yeah, exactly. To get some time to yourself and you know, do some things different. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And deadlines don't matter, you're not trying to be late for anything. Exactly. Nobody, you know, yeah, so right now, you just time to do as much as you can when you can. Yeah. Because I don't know if we're ever going to get this time back. So yeah. I think, I think that's, uh, you know, that, that would be, that would be my advice really. Thank you. All right. So, again, for, like, so far on this phone call, I haven't acknowledged it, but, like, in the podcast I have, okay, so I, I'm acknowledging it again while you're over the phone. Thank you for being on board for SOVA and as the dean. And I'll be expecting a lot of texts from you, like, oh, Binta, I stumbled on this thing that I'm studying because the whole point is about sharing, okay? Like, I'm sure that you're exploding with ideas from a lot that you've learned from um, mentors in photography that you follow at this time. And this would just be like a channel to kind of point people to those resource centers, you know, whether it's online or somewhere, or via a book, you know, mm-hmm. look out for this, look out for that, join in on, on this conversation, mm-hmm. or even just listen to the podcast because you'll be sharing some tips. Um, so, yeah, so thank you. I'm really excited about this. Yeah, and thank you for having me. Yeah. So with the follow-up online, like when we put this out there and people send in their questions, then I'll do a follow-up but of course we'll keep talking right Definitely. yeah thanks for that link the other day by the way the uh, yeah. the one on dog meals 
Definitely. Yeah, made sense. Like, uh, I'm getting a ladder. People won't get this joke, but I'm getting, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a ladder. And seriously, I've, 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 it made me, it made me start thinking. Uh, maybe this, this should be off record, but it made me start thinking what it would be like to be, um, at the Senate when my like to get to where the my boss goes to sometimes like at the Senate. I've never been there, and that's really because he was like, no, he doesn't want, you know. Um, but it, it's still making me think about it again. Like, oh, it would be nice to actually capture the Senate. Like, there are so many senators, but right now all I'm seeing mostly, uh, maybe when you get news from channels, or you, there are just few senators that we know. I, I think mm-hmm. so. They're like those ones that were ex governors. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? No, I do. I do. Yeah, I've been thinking do, about it and just. It made me realize how much, you know, as a storyteller, we should actually treasure opportunities you know, that yeah. give us access to tell some unique stories. Um, yeah. A friend of mine said something that sometimes you might actually be a good storyteller. You might actually have, you know, something to say. But what makes a story a story is that this it's a story about something remarkable. It's a story about yeah. something relevant. You know, a story yeah. that people actually can gain something from so if you don't have a remarkable experience if you're not having like a relevant experience in a peculiar time in history there's nothing that would be that you know interesting about your story so yeah just saying it's not for good i might add it i don't know mm-hmm. all right see, we'll talk forever and i think also too oh go um, ahead go ahead it's, it's about something it's about you turning something very simple into something very funny True. Um, and, I, and I think that's one of the beauty we have as storytellers. Like yesterday, I was looking at um, some images I took and how they really made me so happy. Um, mm. And there's some images you put up now that just make you smile. Mm-hmm. Um, and they might never happen again. You know, they might happen, mm-hmm. but they might never. And it was just like of the people coming down the plane and saluting. The, the the air marshal and and the the, the executive the, the flight crew and mm-hmm. just saying I salute you back and just those kind of mundane but special moments. Yeah. And the fact that he said, Oh, I salute you too mm. you know, he, like he's saluting him and he's like, No, I'm saluting you back too. Yeah. And he's also actually saluting and he just yeah. brought a smile to my face that like, wow, this is yeah. Just, and you, you, you are probably the only one who remember that because of the picture. Like they both yeah, might exactly. lose that moment in memory. Like, oh, did I actually say I salute yeah. you? I salute you back, you know. Yeah. But when you write it, yeah. It, 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 it's more of the, the fact that it was a simple, simple gesture. Mm. But now it's a gesture that has won the hearts of people. Uh, and that is the power we have as storytellers to take the things that happen in a split second and now make them look extraordinary, yeah. And bring the mind of people and hearts forever. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's something we shouldn't take for granted. We're, we're extremely powerful. Like the Alicia Keys, I think I got it on the page yesterday. Mm-hmm. The Alicia Keys video. The majority of what she used there was the images. Mm hmm. There's still images, the mm-hmm. good job video that mm-hmm. people to paint all the front lines mm-hmm. of And I was like, this also comes from the brave and courageous photographers mm-hmm. who are How making they? lines to yeah. tell the story. They're also putting themselves at this great mirror. Yeah. But because of their courage, she can produce amazing content and make mm-hmm. uplifting music video to cheer people on and mm-hmm. that is just incredible mm-hmm. so I, I, the power we have of storytelling that I don't I don't think we should we should take it for granted. True. True. Well said. Thank you. I'll keep in touch. Mm-hmm. Enjoy. Please Thank be safe you. out Thank there. You for me. Watch out for the <laughs> virus. Don't let it come near mm-hmm. you. Yeah, but good, good. Yeah. yeah. Alright, so thank you. Sure, sure, sure. Alright. Alright.
Yeah. Mentella. <laughs> <laughs> Isuza. Yes, and we're back. So that was my conversation with Tolani Ali, our dean here at Sova Podcast on Photography. Um, I hope you captured some of the lessons shared and the thoughts. Okay, so I owe you an apology in a way, maybe. Uh, the questions, we just kind of went through the flow and we didn't talk so much on her journey into photography. But hey, it's really about, you know, keeping it real here and still learning anyway. But if you have questions, like if, if that's something that matters to you, you know, you'd like to know more about her journey into photography. If you have like peculiar questions, please write them down, you know, in the comment section on YouTube. Um, okay, by the way, if you're wondering how can I assess Sova, I don't know how you're listening right now, but if you're sharing this and someone is wondering, or if you are wondering other ways you could assess Sova, just click on sova.disha.page. So S-O-V-A dot dish, as in disha, D-I-S-H-A dot page, as in P-A-G-E, right? And um, I look forward to your comments and yeah i'll be i'll be following up looking forward to more looking forward to more um engagement with your favorite photographers um, please follow us on instagram at sova podcast um, and every other link you can find them on sova.disha.page thank you for listening i'm signing out from the first episode of sova podcast on photography take care and hey don't forget to back up your files